Ever since the Garden of Eden, humanity has had two choices, the path of life or the path of death. We have seen that when God rested on the Sabbath day, He blessed it and sanctified it. And the Sabbath was supposed to represent a rest from Satan's work system. God's grace is the path or the way of blessings. The beginning of the fourth commandment in Deuteronomy 5.15 states, And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The slavery of the children of Israel in Egypt is a type of the slavery of humanity to Satan's principles of reward and punishment. God wants us to know that He is the one who frees us from the bondage of this principle through the Tree of Life principle of unconditional love. The oppression and violence related to Egypt is the reward and punishment system. Pharaoh's crossed arms holding the crook and the flail symbolize exactly the reward and punishment system. We see this system coming into being in Ezekiel 28.15. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. In the word study, the word violence is Hamas, which is a masculine noun meaning violence, wrong. It implies cruelty, damage, and injustice. The word Hamas is also used in reference to Abraham. Abraham's cohabiting with Hagar is described as a wrong done to Sarah. And the word study says that when this word is used in relation to physical violence, cruelty is implied. The word study goes on to say that when coupled with the term instrument or weapon, Hamas becomes an attributive noun describing weapons or instruments of violence. When it describes a person, it can mean an oppression oppressor or a violent man. If we look again at Ezekiel 28, 16, and we see where the word abundance is used, by the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within and you sinned. We can compare it to verse 18 where it says, you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. It just so happens that the word abundance and multitude are the same word, the Hebrew word rob. It then becomes clear that the abundance of Lucifer first trading was the abundance of his iniquities, of his system of reward and punishment. And it was by that abundance that he defiled his sanctuaries, that is, the human race. God, the Creator, is not involved with Satan's iniquity system of reward and punishment. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without iniquity. Righteous and upright is he. The Sabbath reveals a non-violent creator, a God of love, agape love. But we may well ask, what is agape love? The Apostle James says that the wisdom that is from above is first pure, without mixture, clean, holy. And this is foundational in order to understand God and His agape love. We learn more about God's love in 1 Corinthians 13. God's agape love is patient. This word, patient, makrotume, denotes longanimity, slowness to anger or passion, long-suffering, patient endurance, forbearance. It is opposed to haste, to passionate expressions and thoughts, and to irritability. It denotes the state of mind which can bear long when oppressed, provoked, calumniated, and when one seeks to injure us. God's character of love is kind. Christeomai means to be kind, obliging, willing to help or assist. Agape love does not envy. Zelo means to burn with zeal, be heated or to boil with envy, hatred or anger. Agape love does not boast. It does not brag, boast or vaunt itself. It is not puffed up to inflate, that is, make proud, haughty. Agape love does not behave itself unseemly. It is not unbecoming. The Joseph Benson commentary says, or indecently, that is, it is not rude or willingly offensive to anyone, but renders to all their dues suitable to time, place, person, and all other circumstances. 
Agape love does not seek its own. It is not selfish. It does not seek its own happiness exclusively or mainly. It does not seek its own happiness to the injury of others. Agape love is not easily provoked. The word paroxuno means to sharpen alongside, that is, to exasperate, to easily provoke, stir. Agape love thinks no evil. It does not store up the memory of any wrong it has received. Love will put away the hurts of the past instead of clinging to them. And it does not reckon, charge, or impute to a man any evil intention or design. Agape love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Jesus hated iniquity and loved righteousness. It bears all things, believes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails and it never ceases. So what is agape love? Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not easily provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, keeps no account of evil, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Agape love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Agape love never fails, never fades out, or becomes obsolete. It never comes to an end.